let's talk about the Lakers. Um, this is a team that we have been discussing almost weekly now because ever since the in-season tournament, they have just been a mess. The most recent loss over the weekend to the Utah Jazz, LeBron James did not play in that game. Anthony Davis did play, was inefficient in that game. And look, even without LeBron, that's a game that a Laker team with expectations should be expected to be competitive. It should be expected to win a game like that. Now, the Jazz are playing great basketball. They, they are looking like the team we saw in the first two months of last season. Now, they've just turned it on at a different point in time in this year. But, you know, this was another loss for the Lakers. I think they're 2-6 and six in their last eight games. They have been a disaster since the in-season tournament, sprinkling in a win or two here or there to kind of slow the bleeding. But um, they are that jazz game notwithstanding in the middle of a fairly long stretch of home games. Uh, you know, I, I think this home schedule, Rohan, is, this is the, the the come to Jesus moment here. Like this is where they have to go on a run over these next couple of weeks. It begins Monday night against Oklahoma City. I expect LeBron to play in that game. I expect it to be a tough game. Oklahoma City is really good, but look, they beat the Thunder back in late December. These are the kind of games they're going to have to start to put together because if they don't and they get to the end of the month and they got to go back on the road again before the February trade deadline, I don't know what can happen with this group because this is now their opportunity to show that they are a functional team, that they are not a team that is middle of the pack defensively, which is where they are right now, that they are better than bottom third in the NBA offensively, that Guys like Rui Hashimura coming back and Austin Reeves can play better. Like th this, these next couple of weeks, I think, are everything for the LA Lakers. What do you think? Absolutely. Real quick, I we're, I just want to say very quickly, you mentioned that they lost to the Jazz. The Utah Jazz are like the hottest team in the NBA right now. And I think I know, Will Hardy. I know. I know. I just want to say that I think Will Hardy should be like talked about as one of the best coaches in the NBA. That's all I wanted to say. I mean, he is. He's he incredible. was talked about he last is. year. Last yeah. year, they kind of just they yeah. stumbled down the stretch. Right. But, but you know, he, he's... His his mind is is it's, yeah he's rare. one of the sharpest like he is a people very, I've talked yeah. to in the league ever. Yeah. Um, I so I think there's a couple teams, Chris, that I think people are kind of very scared to write off, and this is where I commend you because last year you hitched your wagon to the Lakers and making the finals, and you came very close. You rode that team to the wheels fell off, and it was just an impressive commitment to the take. So in in spirit of uh, 2023 Chris Mannix. Here's what I got. The Lakers are done. They're just done. They're 19 and 21. And I think people are so scared to write them off, especially after what happened last year. You know, they end up making to the conference finals, but they get swept. They don't win a game. The Nuggets are in firm control of that series. Listen, and by done, do I mean like, could they make the second round? Sure. But there are too many teams that are better than them in the West. The Thunder, the Wolves, the Clippers, the Denver Nuggets, the reigning champions. And I just don't see the Lakers. There's not a move on the board for them to make. that's going to make them better than those teams. Number one, number two, you know, Darvin Ham has said oh, we're battling injuries. Uh, the rotation's been all over the place. I like Darvin Ham. I think he did obviously did a great job last year, uh, kind of keeping things afloat there amid all the injuries. But LeBron and Anthony Davis have been healthy. They've they've played an incredible amount of minutes together. They're they're right up there. Uh, with other top duos in the NBA. So I just don't buy the injury excuse for them. What it comes down to is, despite having LeBron and Anthony Davis, they can't put a good offense on the floor. And and that's been a theme uh, during LeBron's tenure in Los Angeles, frankly, is his teams haven't had good offenses. You know, remember, remember that first year where people were like, is Anthony Davis the best teammate LeBron has ever had? And it's like, well, is it too much to expect them to have a, a top 15 offense every year uh, if they're both still so good? Um, and that's not to say it's 80s fault. I, I think obviously a huge part of it is just the constant upheaval of the rotation around those two guys. And they kind of opted into this size thing this year, but still with iffy shooting. And, you know, last year, at least you could say, listen, they need to get AD and LeBron on the floor and they need to trade Westbrook. Those are those are major moves that they can make to kind of turn this thing around. I don't think that's out there this year. I don't think Zach Levine is going to vault them over the Thunder or any of the teams I just mentioned. So... I I just can't take this team seriously. It's We've had now a half season's worth of data to show that, you know, this isn't it. 
and it's it's they can't use the injury excuse this year because they they've had LeBron and AD. Yeah, I, I think to your point about no deals being out there to be made is the most important one. Last year, they had some flexibility. They could move off the Westbrook contract, attach a draft pick to it, and come away with you know the smorgasbord of Jared Vanderbilt and Rui Hashimura and all the players that they were able to acquire from mid-January on. Um, this year, they don't have those options. Um, could they go and try to make a deal for Zach Levine? Yeah, but that's going to take three players just to get to Zach Levine's number, right? You're going to have to do D'Angelo Russell. You're going to have to do Rui Hashimura. Um, you you don't want to throw Austin Reeves into that mix, but I'm sure Chicago would ask for them for him. Um, it just doesn't work. And, you know, Pascal Siakam out there as a trade option. Sure, the Lakers would love him, but they're going to get outbid because they don't have the assets other teams do for Pascal Siakam, namely Golden State, which I think is in the driver's seat uh, when it comes to those Pascal Siakam uh, talks. Uh, so I, I, I don't see a deal out there that is going to make them measurably better. So then you're just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping for internal improvement, right? So Rui Hashimura had what, like 17 points against Utah in his return, yeah, good performance, you know, by Hashimura was his numbers, you know, 50% from the floor, you know, uh, three rebounds and assists, that's nothing, but whatever. Um, he he played pretty well offensively, you know, gave them some decent numbers offensively. Can he continue with that trend? Can Austin Reeves continue to improve if he's going to stay in that starting lineup? Uh, Gabe Vincent is out there as this great unknown. Gabe Vincent has barely played for this team this year. Um, can he come in and be the kind of impact player he was for Miami last year? I know there were expectations on Vincent being a part of this rotation, a pretty good three and D type guy, you know, had deep playoff experience with the heat. Can he be kind of their trade deadline pickup when he comes back to the rotation in February or March? Jury's out if, if it's too late in the season for Gabe Vincent to be a real contributor. But I, I am not anticipating a needle moving deal for the Lakers because even if they're able to acquire a player like Levine, it's going to cost them a lot. Uh, even if they're able to acquire a player like Siakam, it's going to cost them a lot. Uh, and beyond that, like, I don't know what, what it is. I don't know what the deal is out there that makes the Lakers like DeJounte Murray, same thing. Like there's going to be a bidding war for DeJounte Murray mm -hmm. when, if, and when the Hawks really get serious, and we're going to talk about them because they should, if, and when the Hawks get serious about, trading uh Murray or Trey Young or both. So I don't know. I, I don't like I, I think it, it's to me it's all about organic improvement with the Lakers. And if these guys that were so good for them from February on last year can get back to being those type of players and getting that team back to being the type of defensive team it was once was. Like they're never gonna be a great offensive team. Like, mm -hmm. they're not going to be top 10 offensively. They don't have the horses for it. What they can be is a grinded out defensive team like they were top five in the playoffs last year. And then, say, final six minutes, we got LeBron, we got AD, they're going to take us home. Like, that right. is the kind of team that can make them successful. What degree of success, I don't know, but they can be successful playing that way. But as long as they're middle of the pack defensively and this bad offensively, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not winning anything. For sure. And I think, you know, Vincent was definitely someone who I think they had high expectations for, someone who I think they probably thought would close games over D'Angelo Russell. I mean, I get that they've had guys in and out, but Ham's rotations have really been all over the place. And I think a big kind of issue with them this year has been regression from Reeves. I thought Reeves was someone who, you know, he wasn't necessarily a defensive stopper for them, but someone who they could, they could throw on Steph Curry in a playoff series, for example, and chase him around. Um, it's kind of been the opposite this year in terms of Reeves is getting targeted, I think, in a way that he wasn't last year and is not necessarily holding up as well. And I think that's been an issue for them. You know, it's just hard for them to find two-way guys. I mean, Vanderbilt was someone who they finally got back in the starting lineup, but his shooting is so tricky. Um, I, I, I really don't know what the options are for them. Because even, like, you mentioned Hachimura, LeBron misses that Jazz game. 
they had success at times in the playoffs playing him with LeBron and AD. You know, he had that big, some big games in the Grizzlies series. But you remember the Grizzlies were like, yeah, we're, we want them to take, we want him to take those shots. And if that's how we end up losing, that's how we end up losing. That That's kind of been the book on Hachimura, and it's going to continue to be that. And it's like, can you get away with his clunky sizing next to LeBron and AD? Like, yeah, I just think that, it's crazy because I think we all thought they had a good offseason. I like Torian Prince for them. I really like Gabe Vincent from them. But I think we've seen regression from some of the guys who played huge roles from them last year. And it, that, that's that been a big issue. And it's just crazy to think how – I understand LeBron's gotten older. He's had his own injury problems. Like that, That's been a big part of kind of the issues he's had in L.A. But – Man, the Lakers were really kind of handed a golden ticket when LeBron decided to sign there. I mean, it's not like he signed there because he wanted to play with all the guys on the team. They traded them away within a year. Um, that they they just not been able to find any measure of consistent success around. I mean, three coaches, constant overhauls of the supporting cast. Uh, it's uh, it's wild when you zoom out. It <laughs> in on a micro level, if you want to zoom in. First quarters for the Lakers have been a disaster. They have oh, been God. Yeah. as bad as they usually are offensively, but defensively, they are 28th in the NBA in defensive rating in the first quarter of games. And they're, yeah, they, uh, it's like 25, 26 times mm. they have trailed after the first quarter. So By every single digits. game, they are digging themselves out of a hole. Every game. I mean, they, they keep throwing these new starting lineups out there, too. And it's like, there's none of it, <laughs> none of them have worked. Nothing's worked.